Hello, my name is Alex Cock, and welcome to the final part in the three-part SOLIDWORKS quick tip on walkthroughs brought to you by InterCAD. The story so far, we have taken a look in the two previous parts on how we can assess the walkthrough functionality within SOLIDWORKS, and of course, we have gone through the different tricks that we could employ to actually very quickly create a simple walkthrough that gives us relatively decent results with not that much effort being put into the walkthrough process. So far what we've done is we've gone through the general functionality without having to go too much in detail to the user interface itself. Of course there have been some uh, issues that have popped up that we need to address. For starters, the we would have noticed that the outcome from part 2 to be not exactly the smoothest in terms of transitions when it comes to the walkthrough how, and this goes back to how the paths were defined and that's what we're going to address here in part 3 so what we're going to deal with today in part 3 are the finishing touches what we need to take a look at before we finally publish our walkthrough as a video and pass it on on a disk or put it on up on YouTube. Essentially, these are the four areas that we'll be looking at. The path, how it's defined, the perspective, turning it on or off, lightings and shadows, that's quite important actually, amazingly influential on the outcome, and of course, real view, SOLIDWORKS functionality. Now in part 2, this is where we left off. We created a very simple walkthrough with the help of a few um, sketch segments here. Overall, the result was decent. We got an idea of how a walkthrough can be created. However, the transition between the different segments of the sketches weren't exactly the smoothest. Now to address that, we can very easily and quickly create a new sketch here. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to create a sketch from a spline making use roughly the same locations as the existing path and we're going to end off here alright let's just say that the avatar is going to move this way right now and right down to this path up to this location next is of course we'd like to remember to turn off the sketch so that it actually looks a bit better same goes for this let's go hide this on off and before we go on to create the walkthrough, there are a few other things we could consider playing with. Of course, the scenes, in terms of the lights, we could turn this on and off, background environment and all. Okay, very, very quickly, we could change the environment to suit our requirements. Alright, in addition to that, what I had previously turned on was real view graphics and shadows. We could always turn on perspective also to give a bit more um, a more realistic view to the whole avatar walking around. So from this now, I'm going to just go on to add a walkthrough and for my motion constraints this time, I'm going to go on to select sketch 2. Alright, and I'll start the walkthrough this time. Same interface pops up, we're familiar with this right now. I'd like to constrain the avatar to sketch 2. And this time, what we're going to be doing is we are going to just move this around. Let's slow it down a bit. Alright, and have him walk through. And as you can see here, as I move the avatar along the way, the transition across the room is very smooth. He's going to take one good look again at the yacht over here. Let's go back to the original location, move it about, and the transition across the whole room is one smooth path, thanks to the help of a spline instead of the different segments of a sketch. And as I capture this, and he leaves our room. Let's go on to increase this as he needs to turn around and say goodbye to his hosts. So let's turn this around here and he gives the room one final glance. So with that simple exercise we effectively have gone through how to access the functionality to creating a quick walkthrough to how we can enhance the visuals and this is effectively the final outcome with the lighting turned on quite quickly and some perspective as you can see now the avatar is looking around the place uh, the apartment and checking the place out one last time before he steps out of the apartment and 
just some nice tweaking to the likes give us some decent shadowy effects which adds to the realism of the whole movie and finally as the avatar turns around you will notice that the effect of the lighting actually also plays on the overall feel of quality in the video and imagine this took less than 10 minutes of effort imagine how much greater quality video you could produce if you had just a few more minutes to spend so with this we come to the end of the walkthrough series and this has been a presentation that I hope you would have found very useful as always for further questions please feel free to contact intercat at the numbers shown or the addresses through the internet and once again my name is Alex Scott I'm a business consultant at intercat and this has been a quick tip session proudly brought to you by intercat